Hi guys, Tracy here with this layout that I'm going to do. Remember I made that uh, photo so that it fit inside of the road trip wood veneer frame. Thinking about using some of these stamps, I'm just pointing out some of the ones that I might use and some of the embellishments that I might use. I'm going to put aside these uh, overhead, the not overhead transparencies, but transparencies to use for layers. Love that paper, but I'm not going to use it on this layout, but I am going to use that stripey one. And I'm just kind of looking through what papers I do have left and kind of heading towards the back because I want to pick out a background paper and I'm thinking I might want a plain background paper like that cream. It's kind of like a natural paper. It has a little flex in it and I'd like to use this matte paper as well. So I'm not sure which of these two I'm going to use. I'm leaning towards the vanilla paper for my background and I'm going to hack up that matte paper even though I do love it as a whole piece. It's important to not be afraid of cutting up things so that you can use them. Hi guys, so I'm just interrupting the process for a second here just to say that one of the things that I love about this paper trimmer that I might not have pointed out before is that it's longer than 12 inches so you can leave the manufacturer strip on the paper when you are making a cut. So for example, I want to, normally if I wanted a 12 by 12 strip of this with my other trimmer, I would have to cut this off and then cut this at the strip length that I wanted, um, at, the, at the width that I wanted, but because this one um, is longer and it does fit, I can just kind of decide the, the width of the strip that I want, and I want it to be kind of skinny, maybe something like that. And then there we go, I have my strip. So I just wanted to point that out because I'm not sure that I have ever mentioned that before. The only thing when you when you are cutting that way is, uh, oops, I might not have cut. This top line is not straight, so that's one of the problems with hacking your paper is that it doesn't always do you well for the next time. Uh, yeah, so I just wanted to point that out just because I wasn't sure if I had ever pointed that out before and uh, Some people were wondering about this paper trimmer because it doesn't have a paper guard to hold your paper in place I just place my hand like this and So I'm just lining it up here because this is a manufacturer's edge So I know that it's straight this this edge is not straight so I can't line it up with the ruler there and I mean I don't usually have any problems with that. That's a little bit too wide so I'm gonna, I wasn't paying attention there. Try again a little bit thinner, there we go. So now back to the process, I have this uh, strip and I am basing this layout off of a sketch, which is, this is my second time this month using a sketch, uh, but I actually am afraid that I cannot share this sketch with you guys because it is not up yet and uh, you can look for it I need to be very careful to not glue that on backwards. That would be bad. <laughs> I had the road trip on there backwards, the, the words. Uh, yes, so back to the sketch. Um, it is a sketch by Susan Stringfellow, and it has not been released, like it has not been published yet for Scraptastic. So you can see this sketch a little bit later on this month on the Scraptastic website. It's usually the last Thursday of the month that we use for sketchy Thursdays and you will see this sketch along with the sketch that this is based upon and this layout and a whole bunch of other layouts that are inspired by the sketch. So make sure you check that out especially if you like sketches. So I'm trying to uh, layer a couple of these of these transparencies. I always want to call them overhead transparencies. You can tell my age. <laughs> um, they're really cute. They're from Studio Calico and a whole package of them came in the kit. So I'm trying to use up a bunch of them. And I'm just going to use my glossy accents and put it on very sparingly all the way around. This glue has a lot of grip to it, so you only use, need to use a teensy weensy bit. And if you use more, it tends to ooze out of the edges and create little shiny blobs of glue around the edges of your project, and you definitely don't want that. So I, as I mentioned, I am going to hack up this uh, map paper, despite how much I love it and how beautiful I think it is. I'm basically cutting it. Um, I was thinking two things. I could either cut it so that the layers fall, so that I'm including the part of the world that the uh, picture was taken in, or I could include the part of the world that is prettier <laughs> and shows 
uh, more of the patterns underneath. So if I had used North America, I would have I would have not had the shapes and colors sticking out around my layout that I wanted. So I went ahead and used the kind of the the other side of the of the earth, uh, the place that I've never been before, um, simply because it is more for a design element than for it to be themed with my layout. It is travel themed and it is a, a map, so it didn't matter to me that it was a, a place that was in the photo or not. If that mattered to you, then you might have picked the other side of that paper to use, and either is okay. So I am outlining these two papers uh, because on the cream background it is nice to have that matte paper outlined and also um, there's lots and lots of colors going on and so I want to bring those papers together and uh, the white, the, the sorry that bluish green floral paper, um, that one is not outlined because it's torn and, and I kind of like the soft edges of it so you don't have to outline everything when, when you do some outlining. So those two bolder colors colored papers, the map and the uh, diagonal stripe are both from the Fancy Pants uh, As You Wish collection and then that greenish floral or bluish I guess floral paper is um, from what is that one from? It's from Crick Paper from the Oh Darling collection. I'm just taking a minute to write some of this stuff down so I don't forget and I am referring to that very paper as I narrate this. If you want to have a look at that paper and print it up and use it yourself or even change it, you can check out my blog under the tab called resources or scrapbooking resources. You'll find the um, the file there that you can use in either PDF if you want to use it as it is or in Word file if you'd like to change it which you probably will because it's very specific to me and my needs. So now I'm going to use some of these sketch thickers that came in the kit. This is the Let Me Go kit by the way um, that I'm using from Scraptastic and uh, these are one of my very favorite, I know I've said this a lot of times, but these are one of my very favorite thickers so I love using them and I love using them down in the corner here for the title because it does, because they're heavier, because of their dark color, it does kind of ground that title down there in the corner. I'm going to use the Fancy Pants letter stickers with the circles to uh, make part of this title for the word drive. So first I was going to just call this 16 hours, maybe 16 hours in the car, I wasn't sure, and then I decided to change it to 16 hour drive, so that's why I had the S there, which I then removed. And I do put my letter stickers on uh, wax paper just so that I can play around with where they're going to go. Now I would like to do some journaling in the, in the the uh, just to the left of the photo, and I'm looking through some of the embellishments that came in the kit as well, some of the papers that came in the kit, just to figure out where I might do my journaling and what I might place it on and while I'm at it I'm also just pulling out some embellishments that might go along with the with the layout that I might want to use and I'm just putting them out so I don't forget about them and now I decide that this wonder wanderlust uh, die cut piece is gonna be a better piece for that bottom part of the strip and I'm just pulling out a whole variety of things. I'll use some of them, but not all of them. And I'm going to cut apart this. This is a cut apart from Ormolu. I often cut apart all of those things ahead of time, but I didn't this time just because I dove into the kit really quickly. So I'm going to do some journaling just by hand. I thought about typing on this one, but I decided not to. I'm going to do some typing elsewhere on this layout. I'm going to glue that down right now. I don't know why I decided to do that at that moment, but uh, now I'm going to do my journaling. And it just says, wow, I'm so proud that we made it. The kids were amazingly good. <laughs> and you can see the time in the photo is 3.33 p.m. And that is the 12 hour mark for that trip. We had been in traveling in the car. We had made stops and whatnot. It's If you drove straight through, it's a 12 hour drive from here to Boston. Uh, we had made some stops, so we weren't quite at Boston yet. It, we were in the car for a total of 16 hours. Not in the, well, 16 hours on the road so that included um, taking we didn't sleep but we did stop at a couple of restaurants and let the kids kind of play around and run around in some different places so 
So I'm just uh, again taking some embellishments from the kit, mostly stickers and then that film strip from the ephemera pack from those are all of the stickers are from Fancy Pants. The journaling tag is that I cut apart was from Ormolu. Um, the stickers are from Fancy Pants. They're all from the As You Wish collection. And then that cork globe is a, an exclusive to the Scraptastic kit this month. Those puffy stickers from Dear Lizzie. Oh, I want to use them so much on this layout, but they're not going to make it. <laughs> I'll, I'll save them for another layout. And this sticker set has lots of really specific travel travel phrases on it, so I'm trying to use as many of them as I can because I'm not sure if I'm going to make another travel-themed layout with this kit or not. So I'm trying to use up anything that I absolutely love, get it on the page because it might not make it um, onto another page because I don't think I'm going to do another travel layout with this one. So I'm going to make some embellishments here uh, to go along with that circular uh, die cut piece that's the shape of a uh, compass. So I, what I do is um, with my punches, when I get new punches in circle shapes, if, they're, uh, if they don't have the inches written on the outside of them, I just write it with a um, slick surface marker. So you'll notice that I have like three quarters, uh, one quarter, one half, and that sort of thing written on the t on the fronts of my punches, and that's just so I know what sizes they are. Because sometimes it's a little bit deceiving by looking at the punch to know exactly what size it is. So what I'm doing here is I've got the pink paper with the map, and I've got that bluish floral paper, and now I'm going to grab some black, or it might be a really really inky blue. It's that um, it's black actually. The um, what is that called? The anchor paper there. And you know, I don't really care that it's not a water themed layout and I'm using an anchor. I mean, we were going to Boston and we did take a boat ride, but I don't even care if we didn't. Um, so basically what I did was I cut shapes in all three of these colors so that I can put them in three different places, but not all together. So I'm going to break them up so that each cluster of circles will have a couple of black, a couple of blue, and a couple of pink in a variety of different sizes. So I do have one of each size uh, just so that I can, of each color, just so that I can really vary it. And... It's a little hard to do it with the circles on the layout while you're trying to lay them out, but that's okay. I'm working at it. Uh, and I'm basically trying to make these look random, but obviously they're not random. I'm placing them very purposely. So uh, it's, it's always hard to be happy with what you're doing when you're placing these sorts of things. So when you look at these, you might think, oh, that looks all right. I don't know, maybe you won't. But, <laughs> but when I look at it, I think, oh my gosh, that looks horrible. So, so if you're looking at your layout and thinking that the way you're placing this kind of, of a um, embellishment looks horrible, don't worry because we all think that about our layouts, or at least I think we all think that about our layouts when we're doing it. And once you're done, it will look better. And um, I'll tell you, and one way that you can make that kind of uh, random scattered embellishment look better is to add something that's actually random to it. So I'll get back to that thought in a second while I talk about after I talk about this. So I just took a strip of that transparency and put it down in the corner there, and I put the cork car from the um, from the Scraptastic kit. I'm just moving the H and the R out of my way so that I can straighten out these. I thought I could straighten out these and then lift them as a single piece onto the layout, but it turns out they're just not sticky enough to do that, so they don't stick to each other. So I took the time to line them all up, and then they all fell apart as I put them on. So I'm going to line them all up again on the layout this time, and I'm just spelling out the word drive. And that cork car is one, I mean, that kind of head-on icon of a car is one of my very favorite all-time scrapbooking icons. I don't get to use those often enough, but I really, really love them. So um, I really like putting it right here beside the title all by itself without anything, not without very much layered under it. So there is that transparency, but the transparency is see-through. So it's not that much of a layer. And I really don't want to take away from the bold look of that car because it is one of my favorite shapes. Again, I'm just taking a couple, a variety of different uh, circles here to use down here.
and I punched the pink one so that you could tell that it wasn't just a pink pattern paper so I left some of the cream showing just because I thought that that was added some interest to it oh, that one was upside down it's hard to tell with the pink one and now I am going to outline these I'm outlining these with my most thin pen which is a 0.005 point and I have the brand that I have is called Prismacolor and I'm gonna outline believe it or not I'm gonna outline all of these except for the black ones because you won't be able to see the outline on the black even these teeny weeny ones that's the great thing about having a very narrow pen and a tip for putting these teensy weensy things uh, first of all you'll notice I dabbed a bit of glue on my paper there just so that I don't need to hold on to the uh, dot as I'm as I'm encircling it because as I'm outlining it because that would be really hard it would be hard to outline it so see how I can just stick it on that little bit of glue and it stays put and, but it's not going to stay put forever because it's that's a two-way glue so if you let it dry a teensy bit it's just a um, it's a temporary so here's the uh, the compass which was kind of the start of the whole idea of doing the circles so I yeah that's the great thing about having a really I think I started this thought and didn't finish it a really really narrow pen like a 0.005 pen is that you can outline tiny tiny things with it and I love as you know I love outlining so I'm gonna outline this one too So yeah, I just put, an, uh, the reason there's an arrow there is so that I don't lose my glob of glue that I put on the paper, which I'm going to use for these upcoming circles, um, because of course the glue gets lost on the page eventually because it doesn't have any color to it. So, um, And then uh, the other tip that I have for you for gluing tiny things in place is you'll notice after I peel this little outline circle up, I'm touching it to the tip of the glue pen instead of... Uh, trying to turn it over and get the and daub it with the glue pen so I'm just touching it to the fiber of the tip of the glue pen and that just allows me to have a bit more control and it makes it easier to place And now here's where having that arrow on my paper really helps because for this next one I can remember where the glue was when I had done it before. So this is an example of scattering embellishments around other embellishments. So instead of it being random and instead of it being diagonal on my page or following any kind of a certain shape, these embellishments are placed to cluster around a, a, another set of embellishments that I want to draw your eye to. So in this case, I want you to look at the Wanderlust uh, die cut and the uh, compass. And then in this case, I want you to be looking at my journaling and the little globe and then down here the next place oh I must have already done that down in the bottom corner I want you to be looking at the title obviously so that's where I am clustering my if you want to think about these as splatter or clusters of tiny things so I'm just tidying up my workspace a little bit so that I can think about final touches for this layout and what else I want to add and here I'm going to add some splatter. So this is the idea that I'm coming back to about how you can make your um, clustered tiny embellishments that you want to look like they're just scattered. You can make your scattered things look a little bit more natural by adding something that truly is random. So here I'm going to splatter some gold mist. by It's some Heidi Swap color color mist in the color of gold and I'm just going to splatter it in the three places and this stuff is really it splatters a lot so a lot comes up and a lot goes on your page and so um, but it's truly random and so when you put it amongst the things that you've strategically placed it really does give a nice random look to it as I was drying one of those little dots came up so I had to just apply a stronger glue and I'm going to just dry this with my heat gun and dries fairly quickly and there we go and now I think I'm finished but I'm actually not so 
there's going to be a bit of a uh, almost finish and then I will go back and add a little something. Okay, so I'm going to show you a bit of a close-up before I add the final details because at this point I don't know I'm adding more. <laughs> uh, so here you get to see what some of those layers look like. Uh, I really love using those transparencies amongst my paper layouts because it adds a bit of a shininess and interest and it's just a very, very subtle way to add a little bit of extra pattern to a layout. And then here's how this cluster of little scattered circles look. <clears throat> and then down here the title 16 hour drive and the again just those even though only two little dots of gold at landed in this section it, do, it does add that randomness uh, to it <clears throat> so now I'm realizing that there's nothing here that tells me that it is Boston that we're at or the date or anything so I'm going to adhere a piece of this is just the beige map paper from a beige piece of the water from the mat from the map paper and it's like a grid and I've just put it on my layout ingredient form just because that's a paper that I had at hand and I use temporary glue to adhere it to the back side of that paper and then I just ran it through my typewriter and typed and I have an you can see it there an Olympia old typewriter that I just got off Kijiji for like I think it was $15 or something <clears throat> and I do get the uh, ribbon for it at Staples I just bought a random ribbon and thought I hope this works and it did so I was lucky. <clears throat> I think there are a couple of different options of ribbon types so if you buy an old typewriter you can just uh, take the ribbon out of it and bring it with you to the store and that way if you have different options you know which one to get. So I'm just, uh, I cut off the word Boston and put it on the globe there and then I'm cutting Labor Day weekend and 2013 a little bit separate. I love how an old-fashioned typewriter types the, the, the number three because it has a bit of a tail like the, the bottom part of three kind of hangs down a little bit and I just really love the look of that. So that's why I use my typewriter instead of some letter stickers there to put the year because I often will use letter stickers for the year. But see that three? It's just cute. <laughs> so again here, I've slowed it down again here so that you can see close-ups. A lot of this stuff you already saw the close-up for, but I really like the combination of the little punched circles that are outlined and the splatters and then those gold enamel dots that I added as well. Um, just kind of add a lot of interest and variety in my sprinkles. So thanks for watching everybody. Have a great scrappy week!